moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Look, look, look at me! I'm the woo water boy, dude! Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Calvin and Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope you all are having a good Thursday Thursday. The weekend is coming up really quickly, and I hope everybody's ready for it. Hope you're all doing well wherever you may be. So we are the Dallas Cowboys, and I want to actually, it, this is where I am, I, I, I am an ultimate optimist, okay? I am one of those people that, you know, I'm never the sky is falling or very rarely in the sky is falling. I always try to look for the bright side to everything. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. But I, you know, I, I will have times where I look down and I'm just kind of like, I don't know what's going on. I just don't understand. But those are usually few and far between for the most part. So when I am dealing with this off season, in the back of my head, I know we've been here before, over and over again. It's not like the Joneses were always getting tons and tons of free agents and things like that and spending wildly. This isn't any different. It's not like the Cowboys were always in a rush to get contracts done and, you know, and, and, and take care of their players. They've always waited till the last minute. And for the most part, it hasn't destroyed seasons. Now, I always say at the end of a season, you autopsy the body and see where you failed and try to do better. The battle cry this year was the Cowboys have a culture uh, problem, right? When asked that very question, Jerry Jones talking about the culture problem said if the culture is running the football and stopping the run, then yes, we have a culture problem. And I dare say what we've done thus far is we've moved out a lot of players. Now, you can look. Uh, th this is the, the, the other side of me that's looking and saying the secondary has been record-breaking over the last couple of years. The secondary has not been a problem. The wholesale get rid of Deron Bland or, or Diggs. Uh, not, I don't know if Stephon Gilmore's coming back or not, but to go ahead and get rid of those guys makes no sense. That section of the ball actually played well. Played well enough that Green Bay ended up coming up with a game plan to avoid going after that secondary. So let me remind you guys, this is one of those ones where I used to play uh, Dan Quinn's video of fast and physical this is one of those ones where this one's kind of interesting where we were two years ago because I want to remind everybody as we go through with the doom and gloom and we're going to be the worst team in football we don't care about winning things are awful I know the success in the playoffs hasn't been there but we haven't been that 5-11 and 11 team three years in a row or that eight and 18 three years in a row somehow they seem to right the ship let's go ahead but their flagship station saying oh thank god we can talk about the commanders now <laughs> no, no longer affiliated with them right so but i looked at really when i kevin when i looked at just like a day by day timeline you know they beat the eagles on january 8th they lost two out of their three games right they blame the officials for basically two of the three losses, which is terrible. Dak Prescott sits there and endorses fans throwing junk at officials after the San Francisco game. He has to come out and apologize. You've got a PR director who retires. Nobody, no big deal. Two weeks later, he has, there's this horrible story about him being accused of voyeurism, which he denied. Yep. But the Cowboys have to throw a $2.5 million check at four cheerleaders. Dak Prescott has another surgery. The Cowboys trade a wide receiver that they used the number one pick on back in 2018 in exchange for a fifth. 
because the coaching staff doesn't like him, right? Then they give all this money to a guy who tore his ACL on January 2nd. Michael Gallup's not going to be ready for camp, right? Tank Lawrence is their best pass rusher. He comes back, which is that's a highlight. Jerry Jones gets named in a, you know, Springer-like lawsuit. <laughs> Randy Gregory, whom the Cowboys stuck by despite the fact that he had done nothing for them for years, yep. gives them the middle finger, right, on a flip. Then they've got to cut Lyle Collins because the coaching staff didn't like him. But they kept their punter. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, Mac why, why is Stephen Jones the Alan Greenspan of the NFL? <laughs> That's a great one-liner, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, because it's so – we see all these teams talk about we're in cap hell, we're in cap hell. And then they go out and they trade for Tyreek Hill or they make these giant moves and add this big contract. I know the salary cap is a real thing. And, you know, I've talked to Stephen Jones, whom I like a lot, and he's, he has come to ad admit and embrace the idea if you're going into free agency, that means you're overspending on that player because you made a big mistake two or three years ago. Okay, that's fine. That, that's sound philosophy. Yeah. And are you getting any better? Are the Dallas Cowboys today – no. Today on March twenty third, pardon March, March twenty fifth. Are they any better today, Sean? No, no than way. They we're on. Okay. And no one, and no one, not even the biggest Homer fan. I mean, not even Mickey Spagnuolo would make that kid. Mickey might. <laughs> Mickey might. Okay. So here we are, March twenty first. March twenty first. That was two years ago. Almost two years to the day ago. And they had all of that off-season drama. Now, you know, we're, you know, sitting here understanding that we let Cedric Wilson go. We ended up letting Mari Cooper go. And he brought up that Tariq Hill was traded to the Miami Dolphins, which has been – he's been explosive. He's been incredible. He's been the best receiver out there in football. But I ask you, did that lead to them winning the Super Bowl? Think about that. Miami made all kinds of free agent moves. Is Miami better a, a better team than we are? Yeah, they beat us slightly. They did. They did. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. But how far did they go this off season, or this season? So this is what's trying to keep me sane at least, that this was two years ago. The only thing they brought back was the punter. Well, we brought back the long snapper and we ended up signing a linebacker because we didn't sign a linebacker and only had Leighton Van Der Esch on the roster who had made tackles in the NFL, more than 50, until we signed Anthony Barr, who was on one leg in training camp. We're actually ahead of the curve. I, I, I know it doesn't feel like it. The Cowboys are actually ahead of the curve. And shout out to Game Time, Brian, because Game Time, you know, did bring up something that, that's important, too. Because as we look at the Dante Fowlers, the um, Dorrance Armstrongs and things, shouldn't we believe that Sam Williams, and, and Sam Williams has got a bad rap because he has dumb penalties and stuff, but shouldn't we feel like uh, Sam Williams getting more playing time, that he should be a better player? or at least as good as, say, Dante Fowler. Maybe as good as Dorrance Armstrong. I mean, he's got all the tools. Six foot four, 261, 4'6". Four, I mean, I'm sorry, 4'4", four, four, 40. It's pretty good numbers. It's really good numbers. So shouldn't we believe that maybe he'll be better? That he'll be able to step into the breach? You know, Mozzie, interestingly enough I think it was Law Nation I should have had this graphic but I saw this on um, Instagram what um, Law Nation posted Mozzie Smith's rookie year versus Jordan Davis's rookie year okay now granted Jordan Davis was injured part of the season so I don't know how many games he played in but Mozzie Smith had 304 snaps to uh, Jordan Davis is 225. Um, Mozzie Smith had eight pressures out of that 304. 
Jordan Davis had eight. So Jordan Davis had a, 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 a higher rating, you know, 225 snaps versus three or four, same pressures. But Mozzie actually had a sack. Jordan Davis didn't. PRWR rating, we had a 9.9% with Mozzie, a 47 with um, Jordan Davis. Um, yards given up per run. 1.6 yards for Jordan David. I'm sorry, for uh, Mozzie Smith. And 3.3 for Jordan Davis. Three tackles for loss for Mozzie and two for Jordan Davis. So if you look at it and say Jordan Davis is good, Eagles fans, well, actually, Mozzie Smith actually had a better rookie season. Just saying, that that's per um, Law Nation. So shout out to Law Nation because Law gets puts in the work and stuff. So... Maybe Mozzie steps up and starts being better in the middle. He's also putting the weight back on, which is one of the things that they wanted him to do. For whatever reason, Dan Quinn took a guy who was a big blob in the middle, run stuffer, and he wanted him to lose 40 pounds. And it hurt him. So maybe the Cowboys who are there in practice and have seen these guys have faith in some of the next generation stepping up. And see, a good player isn't good until they are. So I'm trying to be positive here. I know we want to get all of the shiny new pieces that, that seem like, oh my God, they just made themselves better. There's always the off-season champion. But, you know, um, how many times have we seen teams pay a lot to a guy and not get any dividends from it or not go any further having done that. I would like to say, I would like to see the Cowboys continue doing that, being frugal and finding diamonds in the rough, but then topping it off with a couple of studs to help get them over the hump. It's a mix in between there. There's the full, you know, we're the Washington Commanders, we're going to sign everybody because we've got a boatload of money. And then there's the Dallas Cowboys that we're not going to sign anybody. We need to come somewhere closer to the middle on this. Now, a couple of days ago, because this is before Tyron Smith actually signed with the Jets, Michael Irvin actually had a real good take on the Cowboys and their offseason. And we're going to end it with this this morning. Still want trophies when we talk about the ones that you guys won it's been a long time yeah but it's everything it's everything that, that's it. it you know everything has to work around right now jerry getting that one trophy when he gets the one i believe he'll be able to raise his hand like he wants to because he wants credit and that 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 was that was the breakup that was the breakup and now we want to ask about how important is it for jerry consider the breakup a man went back-to-back -back championships, and, 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 you know, Jerry made a change. So, obviously, it's important to Jerry to now, after doing that 100 years ago, to make sure he at least wins a Super Bowl. It's everything. It's everything. And he, and, and he wants to be able to say he did it his way. So it, it, but it is That's everything to him. But it's confusing to watch as just a fan. So he could have had Bill Belichick, but maybe maybe he decided, clearly he decided it wasn't worth it. He's got Dak ahead, and he's got to decide whether Dak is his guy. He's not a young guy. No. This is his last, uh, he, he's he's approaching the battlefield right now for his last attack. Right, right, right. And But 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 he wants to, he, he wants to win, and he wants to do it his way. And now I, I, I always say this, guys, when you were made, I don't know how much he is worth $10 billion. It's hard to tell that guy when all of his decisions have worked out so 13. well for him yeah. like that. 13. That dude, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you yeah. know, people always say, man, we Jerry, get Jerry out the way. You think Jerry going to listen to your broke ass? <laughs> <laughs> he got $10 billion. Your ass broke. Why should he listen to you? 13, you know what I mean? 13, Bill. You you're you're shortchanging him. Yeah. What's that? He's up 13. to 13. All right, 13, Bill. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. He's up to and, 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 and he's saying I hoodwinked him. Bought the Cowboy for 140. I got him up to 14 billion. Oh, That's crazy he's got the money. He's got the point, you do that kind of stuff, yeah, you tend to listen to you a lot.
I don't blame you for listening to you a lot either when you can do that. So, that, that, so but, but he wants to win. He wants to win. He just wants to do it his way. And, 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 and I like some of the things, just not all of them. Like, cause sometimes you do need hope. You kept the same quarter, uh, same coach. So you get, if you want to keep the same coach, just throw me a little bone here with, with a big name like a Derrick Henry to give the fan base a little more hope. There you because go. Because we've done 12 wins. We've done 12 wins. We've done 12 wins three years in a row, and we were out the first round. Now you come in with a player that says, hey, this guy can change things. Now you get hope that maybe this will be a different year. And, and, and that, that I think, you, you had a chance to give that fan base a little ju- joke, and, and you missed it. So you're the GM. What do you do now? Well, I, I stay pat right now. I, and, and there's still my, my biggest concern right now, honestly, if I'm the GM, I, I, if I'm Jerry, I'm trying to find out where Tyron's going to land at, where Tyron Smith's going to land, mm-hmm. is going to land. Because, you know, he made about $8 million last year, and he really is one of the better tackles in the, in, in the NFL right now. So first, I want to get all my guys back, try to get Tyron back, even though they've said he's going. First, they said he was staying. Now, they say he's going. And I, all of that's just negotiation. But that's what my focus would be, getting back those main players that I talked about, the CD, Dak, and, 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 and Michael, and, and even Tyron. And, and then, how can I get better? How can I go get me a little bit more help on the mm-hmm. defensive line and, and some more linebacker help to sure up this run? And, and I would feel pretty good about that. Here's your hypothetical. So if Dak resigns and he gets his big deal, should he restructure his contract to back end it the way Brady did to get it more players now to prove that he wants to be there and he wants to win now for Jerry? Well, and, and that's just it right there. Dak... I, I, I don't with the way these negotiations are going with him and, and the lead and, and, and the Cowboys. Each time they've been a fight, a tooth, to, a fight to the to, to, to the end. Mm-hmm. So and, and for every dollar, and it has lingered and played on. And I don't think that his agent's going to change. I think that'll be the same situation. I don't think that's going to be able going to be saying, "Hey, listen, we're looking to give a friendly." Team friendly deal. They they want their money, and I and they'll go get, they'll get their money because they got they'll get it because they got all the leverage. Can't franchise me. Can't trade him. He, he has all the leverage, so he'll get it. He'll get it. And I'm okay with that. I like that. I can't. I, I I'm not with those people that say, let's go in a different direction. No, 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 no. I'm with 12 wins. We've been with 12 wins. We're in the playoff, and we got a shot. I'm not okay with going back in a different direction and falling all the way back to four, five, and six wins and out of the playoffs. Let's just keep this thing moving, adding players and winning. Catch the Rich Eisen Show there every single day on the Roku. There you go. So I say this this morning to try and say I've stepped off the ledge. No, excuse me, stepped back off the ledge. Not stepped off the ledge. Stepped back off the ledge. And we'll have to just wait and see because this is the annual What We Do Dallas Cowboys. All right, good people. I hope you have a great day. I've got to go up and work on an old 1837 farmhouse. That's the next project that we got to do. And I got about an hour and 15 minute drive to get there. And uh, I will check you guys out later. Peace out.